intellectually, so that you can understand the problems of the world and where you fit into in that world picture. And I pray that all the fear that has ever been in your heart will be taken out. The sky's falling, the wind is calling, stand for something or die in the morning. Section 80, high power. Kendrick Lamar, he is one of the most respected rappers and artists of our generation. Many see him as a savior for the whole rap game, and many others just see him as a goat. Only a few days ago, he released his fifth studio album, which his fans have been waiting for for five years. And in keeping with that, I just felt like bringing this documentary here. Because just in my early years as a rap listener, Kendrick played a very important role because he is one of the artists who brought me to the new school. This is Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick Lamar Duckworth was born on June 17, 1987 in Compton, California. His parents lived in the south side of Chicago before he was born, but they packed their things just a few years before Kendrick's birth and fled to California. Since then, there has been an incredible gang violence in Chicago. The gangster disciples were driving the monsters and that's why they just wanted to get away. After a stopover in San Bernardino, they ended up in Compton, ironically also a district that is haunted by gang violence. They ended up in Compton because they had family there. They just wanted to start a new beginning and his mother worked at a McDonald's and his father at a KFC. They hustled and were able to afford their own apartment at some point. Shortly after acquiring this apartment, Kendrick was born. As I said, Compton was, or is Compton, a district that is dominated by gang violence. And so Kendrick saw his first murder, for example, at just five years old. Because of this whole environment, he thought he grew up very quickly and matured very quickly. Nevertheless, you have to say that he had a very happy childhood, according to the circumstances. He was just a child who always watched the adults and wanted to find out what they were doing. There is also a little story. When he was a little boy, he met, hold on, Tupac and Dr. Dre. You heard right, Kendrick Lamar met Tupac Shakur. Tupac and Dr. Dre shoot the music video for California Love in the area of his hood. His father heard about it, picked up Kendrick, took him on his shoulders and Kendrick saw the two. An experience that definitely shaped Kendrick. I mean, who wouldn't shape something like that? And this attitude of Kendrick Lamar, always wanting to be the best, was shaped in him at a very young age. His mother always said to him, no matter what you become, give everything for being the best at it. And then he just took that to heart. School was also a lot of fun for him. He had a lot of friends and loved sports like basketball, for example. He also discovered his talent for writing lyrics at school. There are some stories from his school days when it was clear early on that this boy had a talent. But now I'm going to tell you one that I personally thought was pretty cool. One day he forgot to do his homework and was forced to do it in 10 minutes. I think we all know that feeling. Later, when he and his class got their homework back, Kendrick didn't feel good at all. All of his friends had bad grades and he only did the homework in 10 minutes. These are actually not good conditions for a good grade, but he surprisingly got a 1. It was clear to him that he just had a talent for writing. At some point, his father gave him a music system. He always listened to Snoop Dogg, Jay-Z or DMX on this. Through these songs, Kendrick simply wrote his own lyrics, and his passion for music and writing lyrics came out of him more and more and more. Despite all this gang violence in Compton, he managed to stay out of it all. He never joined a gang, and that even though his uncles were Crips and some of his friends were Bloods. You can see that Kendrick was already a very good boy at the time. Nevertheless, he had problems with the police at the time, and that's just because he came from Compton and was dark-skinned. 14 policemen hold a gun very quickly. And so it was with Kendrick. A gun was pointed at him twice, and that from the police. Luckily, nothing happened to him. The hatred that Kendrick felt through all this injustice, he let out in the music. At his school, there were always rap battles during the breaks. And who was right at the front? Kendrick. With the music, he could just let his emotions run free. Yo, creeping to your house, you hear footsteps slowly as I tippy-toe. I'm wise like my pops, but I'm young motherfuckers. I'm the one motherfuckers, plus around hustlers. You want it? They can serve you like a butler. And so, in 2003, the first Kendrick Lamar mixtape was dropped. Young is held in charge under the name k Dog. We can give a fuck about your opinion, but it's more than just weed and women. Gangsters, hustlers, willing collisions. This tape then had Anthony Tiffith, aka Top Dog, an image of Kendrick Lamar in it. 
The former gangster, who has now founded his own label Top Dog, was very impressed. And so it was no wonder that k Dog was signed at Top Dog Entertainment, aka TDE. Apparently Kendrick Lamar freestyled for an entire hour when he was in the studio for the first time. k straight out of Compton, Top Dog, TNT, Flash, And shortly after his signing he moved in with Top Dog, but now I have to tell you a little side story. You can probably remember, as I said, that Kendrick's father worked at a KFC. And Top Dog had tried to rob this KFC long before all this music history, while Kendrick Lamar's father was working there. And so the two met before all the fame, and just before Kendrick and Top Dog even knew each other. Incidentally, it only remained during a robbery attempt. Because Kendrick's father was so charming to Top Dog that he fired him and simply robbed the store, as I find an incredibly scary story. But well, back to Kendrick. Under TDE, Kendrick released two tapes, Training Day, which came out in 2005, and C4, which came out in 2009. I'm the best rapper under 25, 24 inches on my ride. Ball like 23 and I shot my first 22 when I was not. In 2010, K-Dot just wanted to get a little more personal. That's why he changed his name. Now his name was Kendrick Lamar, as we know him today. Under his new name, he released his tape, Overly Dedicated. I personally just celebrate ignorance is a bliss from this tape extremely. When I discovered this track for the first time, a few years ago, I was just blown away by the music video and the whole message. But not only I thought so and many others. No, Dr. Dre thought the same way. Dr. Dre became aware of Kendrick through this song. But I'll go into the relationship of the two a little more in detail. Before the tape overly dedicated, Kendrick had several guest appearances with his label colleagues. For example, at J-Rock, Ape Soul or Schoolboy Q. Fuck you. What a million penises, no homo, fucking faggot You suck a dick and laugh into the big pop sacket C4 even had a rap group called Black Hippie Then came the year 2011 And here Section 80 was released on iTunes And this album is just a classic in my eyes There were just real bangers on this tape For example ADHD, High Power and Blow My High in my eyes, the three tracks are just classics, which also brought me to the whole new school hip hop movement. After this album, Kendrick was called the new king of the West Coast. There were shout outs from Dr. Dre, The Game, Snoop Dogg. And yes, as I said, he was now the new king of the West Coast. In 2012, Kendrick signed with Dr. Dre's label Aftermath Records. But that didn't mean that he was no longer with Top Dog. On the contrary, he stayed true to TDE and was still part of it. His next album was the first album he released under Aftermath Records. Good Kid, Mad City. Again a heavy classic which is incredibly important for the hip-hop world. The album managed to climb to second place on the Billboard charts. And it almost won a Grammy. Yes, because of this album, Kendrick was nominated for a Grammy. But he didn't win anything, but that doesn't mean anything. After all, he won a lot of Grammys. This album had such heavy tracks on it. Among other things, swimming pools. I think almost everyone who watches this video knows this track. It's just a hit song and was also in GTA 5. In this track, the search for alcohol in society is simply thematized. Also on this album were Bitch Don't Kill My Wife, Poetic Justice, Mad City, and The Backseat Freestyle. All songs that I personally celebrate incredibly. Simply an album that definitely has a case to belong to the all-time great albums. And the great thing is, in my eyes, Kendrick has several albums that play in this category. 2015 came to Pimp a Butterfly. An album that, in my eyes, is not only very important musically, but also very important for the community of Afro-American people in America. Kendrick simply advocates equality and against racism in this album. He also liked to express himself socially critical. There were also real bangers on this album, such as King Kunta or Right and I. It was 2015, and remember, streaming wasn't as big as we know it today. 
Yes, and the album sets the streaming record. In the first week of release, it generated 9.6 million streams on Spotify, which was incredibly intense for the time. Thanks to this album, Kendrick also won several Grammys. 2016 came Untitled Unmastered, an album that soon dropped out. Kendrick meant that there were songs on it that were just unfinished. In plain language, they were just demos. 2017 came a real album again. Damn, an album that brought in a few Grammys again. DNA, Love and Loyalty are just a few songs from all the records on this album. And yes, as I said, this album is very intense. In 2018, the soundtrack for the movie Black Panther was released, a movie that I personally really like. And Kendrick produced a large part of this album and was represented on every song. And I think it just shows again what kind of stand Kendrick has in the Afro-American community. Because in my eyes, the movie simply symbolizes the strength and beauty of Africa. And I think a lot of people think the same way. And that Kendrick was just so actively involved in the process for all the music in the movie just shows how much he is simply committed to the Afro-American community and in general to equality. It is also no secret that Kendrick is simply committed to the people of Africa on site. Right now, when I'm recording this video, he's in Ghana, for example, and just plays football with kids. And I just think for his standing, the guy is simply a goat of our generation. It was the same with Tupac back then. He committed himself incredibly for the community and simply fought against oppression. And Kendrick does something very similar in my eyes. A few days ago, I think you all noticed, the new Kendrick album came out. Mr. Morel and the big Steppers. An album that is definitely not tailored for the general public. I think you have to give the album time. And yes, I myself only listened to the album once and have to give it to myself a few more times so that I can really feel it. In my eyes, Kendrick is simply an incredibly valuable artist for our generation. As I said, just for what he does for the community, but also for his diversity. I think his albums are all different. He is incredibly varied. A little fun fact at the end for those who didn't know, Kendrick Lamar is the cousin of Baby Keem. Baby Keem is a rapper, I think many of you know him, and from Nick Young. Nick Young is a former NBA basketball player. Well guys, that's it with this video. I hope you enjoyed this documentary. Kendrick is very close to my heart, because as I said, he just brought me to new school hip hop. Better said, among other things, he brought me to it. Well guys, as I said, I hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you, take care. Until next time, ciao ciao.